Welcome back to the Sandown 500. I'm Wayne Gardner. And I'm Neil Crompton. Uh, no, we'll get, we'll get you're Neil Crompton. I'm Neil Crompton. I'm Wayne Gardner. I hope you're enjoying the Sandown 500 shootout. Back now the world's worst driver, Phil Woods. <laughs> Welcome back. Yes, as the top 10 shootout continues, Larry Perkins is about to hit the track, chasing his third victory here at Sandown. Let's see how he went. They called him lightning, Larry Perkins, the defending battles champion, 46 years of age, tremendous racing driver, ex-Formula One, just about ex-everything Larry Perkins, but Howard Marsden, one man, one man we know that has the potential to win this race. He certainly does. Larry is actually at his best when he's got to use his experience and intelligence uh, in long-distance uh, planning of the motor racing. 113.823 was his qualifying time, so he's in the 13s. One would think that on Jones' 114.8, maybe Perkins could go quicker. I think so. Uh, we keep mentioning tyres, Jeff and I, but it is very important. This is the first time today we've seen Dunlop tyre out. does have a reputation of coming on strong, uh, maybe a bit faster than either Yokohama or Bridgestone. Let's see what Larry can do with it, but certainly he's looking very clean at the moment. Sensational drive at Bathurst last year. From last to first, co-driver Russell Engel, Oh, enormous experience too in this team and uh, as you said Howard there's uh, nothing like Larry he's always likes to uh, to do it the hard way from last to first and uh, in every race extremely competitive nice and tidy probably the tidiest lap we've seen so far it, it is um, this is a, a good uh, grouping between himself and Russell Engel um, that together with the planning and experience that this team has Larry tends to engineer the car as well as drive the car I think that they've got to be one of the favourites for the event. About 580 horsepower in this car as it heads down the main straight again to take the uh, chequered flag in this Repco top 10 shootout for the Sandown 500. Larry Perkins' time is 115 point, sorry, 114.21. 114.21, the fastest yet again. Larry, 114.21, you happy with that? That's all I can do. <laughs> uh, I don't think it'll be fast enough, but uh, it's all in one place. Well, I'll tell you this much, you're, you're fastest so far. Over range. <laughs> oh, no, it's, uh, we're not really cracking on the pace yet in this qualifying uh, for reasons unknown, but uh, it's not the end of the world. And so Weekend, Mark Noski and Gary Walden. An interesting team to watch. It certainly is, and uh, a little, little unusual. But normally the teams come here with their pairings uh, for Bathurst so that everybody can get used to working together. In this case, uh, that wasn't possible for the Scaife team. He's uh, sort of gone in and run with the, uh, with the other two, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how they fan out in this race, but also how it affects them at the Bathurst race. Working at Ritz, dropping off about the same, so uh, we're running pretty much through the form right now. Mark, a bit slower than uh, qualifying, and uh, a bit slower than Larry. Any problems? No, no problems. It's obviously a bit of a lottery when you have uh, just one lap off. In qualifying, you can do two or three laps to warm the tyre, and really this is a test of which tyre comes up to temperature quicker rather than which tyre works the best and uh, we couldn't get enough front tyre temperature and had bad understeer, that's the result. How's the track out there? Are there any problems with the track? No, the track's great, really good. Wind not affecting you at all? Well, it's a big headwind up the back straight. We're probably about uh, 8 or 9 k slower than we were here for the Touring Car Championship round earlier in the year, which uh, doesn't really affect anything. Obviously, all it does is make you go a little bit slower. All right, well, good luck for tomorrow and uh, really you don't need to be on pole to win this race, do you? Well, it's the sort of race that, uh, you know, you need a bit of luck and uh, with pace cars and inclement weather and tyres and fuel consumption, obviously, uh, you know, hopefully at the end of the day we're there with a big shake. Good luck. Thank you. Howard Marsden, you'd be pretty keen to see a Ford victory here this weekend. Much improved performance from Tony Longhurst. Wouldn't be a bad thing to happen at all, but then uh, I'll try to avoid my bias through the weekend. The car has uh, changed enormously again. With it's had a mixed season in the Australian Touring Car Championship, but a new engine, engine builder has turned this car into a very competitive machine again. It has, and it's looking very stable. They've got a very good balance front to rear, despite uh, Tony wanting to go over the inside curve a bit too much. Look at the car, nicely balanced, uh, good shock absorber settings, the car's good. Tony's as aggressive a driver as you're going to get, uh, but it's looking very good. Barry Seaton, of course, building the engines now for this car, has moved to the Gold Coast, left the... Uh, the team, of course, that his son runs, Glenn Seaton Racing, and has put a new engine in this car for the first time this weekend. So the first time we're suing, or we're seeing a Barry Seaton engine in the car, 114.21's the time to beat. Oh, gets a little crossed up there in car 25. 113.48, is that costing time? No, um, the general momentum's still there, so I think he's OK. I think we can expect quite a good time, but at the moment I'm quite attracted to the Dunlop runners. They seem to be getting an advantage. So early today, Longhurst did a 113.48. Has to beat a 114.21. So far set by Larry Perkins. Again, on to the 
the main straight in the Castrol Yokohama 4. One Bathurst in uh, 1988, there's one sand down here before, and we'll give you Longhurst time. Second fastest, 114.33, so Perkins still fastest, but Longhurst now second fastest for Ford. Well, Tony, uh, how did you feel about that one? Uh, second fastest at the moment, but uh, very difficult to get temperature into the Yokohamas on the first lap. You know, it's very, very cold down here, and uh, I would have loved to have done a second lap, but it's the same for everyone. I think we've got a great, uh, consistent package, so cash off Ford's looking good for tomorrow. The uh, the wind out there, is that causing any problems? I think it's slowing you up the back straight, isn't it? Yeah, but it's good down the front straight. You can get the thing on the rev limiter down uh, before the braking area. But I think we're down probably three or four kilometres an hour on the back straight. Uh, yes, I could get it on the rev limiter up there. So I suppose we're doing about 254, 255 now at the back straight. All right. Well, good luck for tomorrow. Uh, this is a race you don't have to be on pole to win, isn't it? Uh, it'd be nice to be there, but uh, look, 500 k's, three pit stops, a few pace cars, a few accidents, it's going to be a big day. So Larry leads the way, improving a couple of places on his qualifying finish, but there are four still to come. When we return, the big weapons drawn in this top ten shootout at Sandown. Steve Johnson will team up in the second of the Shell FAI Fords this weekend at Sandown. Pretty soon, boy wonder Craig Lowndes will have the last say here in the top ten shootout, but right now, it's Glenn Seaton. Well, not a new car, but certainly a new engine built by John Sidney, John Sidney Racing. So, uh, Jeff Brabham, a lot more horsepower in this car. They're talking of maybe 30, 40 horsepower for Glenn Seaton. Well, that would certainly help him. And an interesting uh, difference in style here. Uh, Glenn went out of the pits, and instead of going slow and weaving backwards and forwards, he just went straight out on the racing line and went fast. So, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, that translates into getting the tyres a little warmer for on this lap. But uh, he's been quick all weekend, and I'm sure he's uh, really... Uh, desperate to try and get the pole position. Car is running Bridgestone tyres. His earlier time today was at 112.95. He was second fastest in the earlier qualifying session. The time to beat, 113.83, set by Wayne Gardner. Good driving combination too with David Parsons. Absolutely. Um, you know, when I won here in 93, my co-driver was uh, Parsons, and uh, he's a very steady, fast driver, and for these type of races, uh, a very good teammate. Very tidy lap from Glenn Seaton. Hasn't put the car wrong anywhere. No, and that's, that's always a good sign. Sometimes when you were spectacular, you're going slow. And if you can be really smooth on these laps, it, it might, might not look as fast. Although he's got the car definitely uh, hooked up around there. Uh, the, but the time is there. So uh, as he comes up the start-finish line, we'll see uh, whether he can get it on the front row. So Glenn Seaton on the main straight here for the Repco Top 10 shooter at the Sandown 500. Takes the checkered flag. We'll give you his lap time. Seaton, 113.25. Yeah, that's a very good lap. Uh, you know, he didn't lose a lot from his uh, time earlier, and uh, they're going to be a real threat in this race tomorrow. Very impressive performance from Glenn Seaton. Well, Glenn, uh, you drove your heart out, and it doesn't look like it's quick enough. No, not, not for today anyway, but um, we're on the front row, which is good to be able to, to run the race from the front. Um, last year we qualified second as well, and uh, we led the race from there, so it's still a long way to go. It's 500 kilometres, and there's going to be a lot of teamwork play between now and tomorrow afternoon. The other guys were finding a lot of trouble in warming the tyres up before they got to their flying lap. Did you have the same problem? Yeah, the same problem, but I got, got into it from the word I left from the time I left the pits to uh, try and get some temperature in on. Yeah, for sure, it's a bit skatey, but everyone's in the same boat. And the car itself is handling OK for tomorrow? That oh, was great. Um, I've never been happy. It's probably the best it's been uh, ever since we've been running. So at this stage, I'm feeling fairly confident for tomorrow. Right. OK. Thanks, mate. Well, this is a superstar in the supercar, Howard Marsden. Current winner of the Australian Touring Car Championship. Straight uh, back from Europe with a test session with Tom Walkinshaw Racing. Can Craig Lowndes win his first Sandown 500? I think we'd all like to see him. Certainly, he's Motor Racing's uh, man of the year chap of this age with uh, this sort of maturity wonderful support from uh, what is obviously the best team of the year and uh, it's interesting to see that uh, young Seaton was able to put uh, his Bridgestone car Falcon onto uh, fastest time so far so it's looking good for Craig 
Lowndes today, a 112.3 in the earlier session today, and it really has been the class field all weekend, as we have seen all year. But coming back from Europe with such experience now, will lift this will lift him up another peg or two? It, it certainly will, and uh, certainly the, uh, the position within the team is now totally uh, positioned uh, with Peter Brock taking virtually the number two position uh, within the team to Craig. Craig got everything going for him, including uh, youth, which is a fine thing to have, and uh, just watching the boy through these areas, uh, he's just going places. So this is the car to watch, car number one. Craig Lowndes on pole position for this event last year, but put it in the sand, like Brocky did him and Tom Walker Shaw. Lowndes does it, 112.96. That was a time to beat, 112.96 only man in the 12s that gives him three tenths of a second over uh, Glenn. Those are the two fast cars with uh, Gardner in there, uh, not too far behind them. Good experienced team. We're really shaping up for an excellent race. Great, congratulations, a 1.12. Uh, was that what you are aiming for? Was that as fast as you thought you'd go? Uh, well, aiming for pole position and uh, you know, the cars uh, improved during the weekend and uh, we're quite happy with it, but we were in the same situation last year and we all know what happened to that one, so uh, we'd like to go on and uh, finish the job we started. Now, your, in your warm-up lap was a 114, which was quicker than some of the other blokes were doing. Uh, obviously, you're getting some heat into those tyres pretty quickly. Well, it's, it's the method I used last year, and it seems to work this year, so uh, I'll be keep using it. Well, uh, Touring Car Championship now maybe a sand down to, to go with it. <laughs> I'd love to, yes. And then Bathurst, perhaps? Well, that's got to follow. All right, mate, thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, some people may have forgotten, but Craig showed that he was good for more than just one quick lap with a very solid performance last year at Bathurst. He's pretty keen this year at Sandown. Let's go to race promoter John Davidson. He's in pit lane for the presentation. Thanks very much and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the promoter of this magnificent venue, Sandown International Motor Raceway, I'm very proud on behalf of the Tickford 500 to present the pole position award to undoubtedly the fastest rising young talent in Australia, Craig Lowndes, with a fantastic time of 112.96. Craig, your award, beautiful clock, a Jeroboam of champagne, and also to your co-driver, we'd also like you to have this on behalf of Sandown, and no doubt you won't be drinking that until tomorrow night. No, definitely not. Um, you know, we're in the same situation last year, and unfortunately everybody knows what happened. So uh, hopefully we go and finish the job this year. Uh, Greg and I will be uh, running as a, as a pair again for twice in a row. So uh, hopefully, we, as I said, we can go and finish the job. OK, thanks very much, Craig. Well done, Murph, and I know down you're hoping to get a few more miles than you did last year. Absolutely, you know, the kid does a great job out there. He's the, the man for the job, and again, he proved that uh, he is the quickest guy out there, and uh, we're looking forward to a fantastic race tomorrow.